Hey there. I wanted to share with all of you watching out there about a networking package for Unity. It's called Fishnet, and honestly it's the exact package I was looking for. And I think a lot of you will find it's very enjoyable to use. I'm just going to go ahead and show the very basics on how to get started with this package, so stay tuned. Okay, we're going to first start off by creating a new project. Now that we're in the Unity Editor, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the basic scene. The files will be in the description of the video. We have the scene set up, great. Now let's get that movement script functioning. Once you're in the script, just make your movement code. I'll make something quick and basic. All right, that's everything. Let's go test it out in the editor. Whoops, I'm gonna to need to add a quick fix in the code. There, now this should work properly. And there we go, now we have movement in the game. This is all in single player though, so we'll need to convert this into a multiplayer networked game. Let's quickly add the player to the prefabs folder and then delete the player from the scene. I'm going to go ahead and create an empty game object called Network Manager. We'll use this in a moment. You're going to need to add the fishnet package from the package manager. In order to do this though, you will need to add it to your assets from the Unity website. I'll provide a link for this in the description as well. This isn't necessary, but I'm just going to remove the examples folder to save on a bit of space. All right, once fishnet is imported, which you can see right here, we can now add a network manager component to our empty game object. Make sure to set the spawnable prefabs option to the default prefab objects item. This is used for fishnet to automatically import our prefabs into spawnable assets that can be instantiated and mirrored across all clients. Create a new empty game object. I'm going to call it client server manager. You should not put any of the components put onto this new game object onto the network manager game object or you'll not be able to instantiate the player. Create one script for handling the server and client connection. I'll call it Client Server Manager. In this script, we're going to add the code that will allow the server and client to connect. So let's go ahead and do that. If you're not familiar with the serialized field attribute, it just allows you to create a private variable that will still show up in the editor. It would be like making the variable public. And now to add the logic. Add the client server manager script to the empty game object, as well as the network object component. This will allow us to access additional features in the next script we're making. Create a new script. I'll go ahead and call it spawn player. Because we have the network object component, we can have the script inherit from network behavior. Make sure to include the fishnet.object library. 
This class inherits from mono behavior, so we can still do all the regular unity logic if we wanted to in the script. Type in override and you'll see several options to override methods. Many of these are provided by the network behavior class and are called callbacks. They will run code when a certain event occurs. We'll choose on start client. Make sure you never delete the base logic provided when overriding these network callbacks. We're going to create a new method and turn it into a remote procedure call or RPC for short. Make sure to use the server RPC attribute because the default behavior of RPCs is to only allow clients who own the object to call RPCs for that object. And because this object is not owned by any client, we want to turn that behavior off by setting require ownership to false. Create a variable that will store the player's prefab. And then we'll instantiate the prefab into a game object like we normally would. The additional step to make the object show up on all clients is for the server to call the spawn method. Only the server can call this method, so this is why we made a server RPC. Make sure to add the network connection parameter to the method. Include the fishnet.connection library. Set the network connection's default value to null. When calling this method from the client, the package will automatically fill this parameter so we know which client requested the server to spawn a player. Now we can complete the spawn method by adding the game object we instantiated and the client who requested for a player to be spawned, who will now own this player game object. You'll see why this is important in a bit. Call the RPC method in onStartClient so that when the client connects, the player will immediately spawn. Let's go ahead and add a network object to the player. I'm going to remove these conditions for now for a quick test. Running both the client and server on the same client is called being the host. Add the spawn player component we made onto the client server manager object and drag the player prefab into the player prefab variable. If we run the game now, our player will spawn and you can move your game object around. Simple so far. Let's go to the client server manager script and put back the conditionals now. We're going to now create a new client build. Just to make life easier, let's go to the project settings and under the players tab, we're going to change full screen mode to windowed and change the resolution to 800 by 600. Make sure to untick the is server box and then build our client. We'll put it to the side real quick once it's done. Tick the is server box now and press play. Our editor will host the server. Go back to the folder with our client build and open it up. We have now connected our player. There is an issue though, so let's address that. The server is not updating either player's positions, and the clients have control over all players connected. This is a quick fix. Close out of the clients and go to your movement script. Go ahead and replace mono behavior with network behavior. Include fishnet.object again. Lastly, add a conditional. We want to check if the client is not the owner, and if it is not, then don't let the client control the object. Now we just need to add a component to the prefab. Attach the network transform component to the prefab. We're going to untick sync the rotation and scale since we're not dealing with these two at all. This is all we have to do, so just build like before.
We can open up as many clients as we would like now. As you can see, everything is synced up and working properly on all clients. Hopefully this video helped you get started with using Fishnet. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you like, subscribe, and comment any questions, concerns, suggestions, or whatever else. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.